Hi, I'm David Caroli, a professor at the University of Melbourne in Australia. In this video, I'll be discussing indicators of a warming world. As the Earth's climate changes, we're observing shifts in our climate system. These include observed changes in the land surface, in the atmosphere and in the oceans, and across land and sea ice as well. We use the term indicators to mean variables that we have measured over many decades or centuries that have trends that are consistent with the warming world that we would expect to see as the planet and the climate system warms. For example, we've observed long-term increases in land surface temperatures, in sea surface temperatures, air temperatures near the ground, and air temperatures over the ocean as well. All of these increases are exactly what we would expect from a warming world, making these four separate measurements indicators of climate change. And as the atmospheric concentration of carbon dioxide has increased over the past century, we've observed an increase in global temperatures. In fact, from 1880 up to 2012, we have measured an increase of more than one and a half degrees Fahrenheit in globally averaged air temperature. Natural drivers of climate alone cannot explain this observed warming. Another indicator of a warming world is an increase in ocean heat content near the ocean surface. As you might expect, if the atmosphere is warming, much of that extra heat is transferred into the ocean waters at the interface between the ocean and the atmosphere, at the ocean surface. Ships and buoys measure the amount of heat stored near the surface across the world's oceans. And we've measured increases not only in the ocean heat content, but also in the sea surface temperatures. Both of these increases are consistent with a warming world. Since the water expands when it warms, another indicator of a warming world is the height of the sea level. The increased heat stored in the oceans is causing ocean waters to expand. The water can't push the ocean bottom downward, so the water must rise upward. Measurements of sea level show that sea level has been rising when you average it across the Earth. In fact, sea level rise is already impacting islands in the Pacific Ocean and parts of my homeland in Australia. With over 2 billion people living within 60 miles of the coast worldwide, sea level rise will continue to impact a large portion of the world's population. In fact, sea level rise is impacting coastlines already all around the world, causing erosion on beaches and impacting low-lying islands. But sea level rise is not only caused by expanding ocean waters. Melting glaciers in the mountains and ice sheets also cause sea level rise, where the meltwaters from melting snow and ice flow from the land down to the sea. Warmer air temperatures cause these glaciers to melt. As you can see, many of these indicators are connected in such a way that a change in one will result in a change of another. In this case, our measurement of rising sea levels results from both melting glaciers and expanding ocean waters. In addition to warming waters, the Earth's oceans act as a sink for atmospheric carbon dioxide. But this comes at a price. As dissolved carbon dioxide increases in the oceans, the waters in the oceans become more acidic. So ocean acidification is another indicator of increasing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Measurements of ocean pH and carbon dioxide concentrations in the oceans show that pH is decreasing and carbon dioxide levels are increasing. The acidification of the ocean waters is already harming marine species, especially those that need strong skeletons to survive, such as corals and shellfish. We've also observed an increase in the amount of water vapour in the atmosphere, another indicator of a warming world. Warm air can hold more water vapour than cooler air. So as the Earth's temperature increases, we expect to see increases in water vapour in the atmosphere, and that's what we've seen in 
measurements and observations already. This increase of water vapor in the atmosphere causes a positive feedback because water vapor is a greenhouse gas. The more water vapor, the more long wave radiation from the Earth's surface is trapped in the atmosphere, leading to warmer air temperatures. This further increases the Earth's temperature that then leads to even more water vapor in the atmosphere. Another indicator of a warming world is declining sea ice extent. Melting sea ice has especially been apparent at the North Pole and in the Arctic. Again, we see a positive feedback loop. As sea ice melts in the warming temperatures, the reflection of sunlight decreases in the area. So more of the sun's energy is absorbed rather than being reflected back out to space. With more energy absorption, more ice melts, and the reflection continues to decline. Similarly, warmer air temperatures cause snow to melt. For example, mountain snowpack in the Rocky Mountains has declined in the past few decades and resulted in less meltwater during the summer in the Colorado River. As the Earth warms, we expect to continue to see reduced snowpack and shortened snowy seasons, leading to less stream flow in rivers in the summer. Thanks to scientists around the world using observation systems to monitor the Earth's climate system, we have these 11 indicators of a warming world. Increasing land surface temperatures, increasing sea surface temperatures, increasing air temperatures near the ground, increasing air temperatures over the oceans, increasing heat content in the oceans, sea level rise, melting alpine glaciers and ice sheets, increasing ocean acidification, increasing water vapor in the atmosphere, declining sea ice extent in the Arctic, and decreasing snowpack. There is no doubt that our planet is warming and has warmed over the last 100 years. Evidence of a changing climate can be seen all around us. 